What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Panda here. Guys, we've got two brand new legendary heroes coming to the game in Eovar and Seraphina, and I want to talk about their kits with you. Let's dive right in. And welcome back, guys. Like I said, we're going to be talking about the two kits of the brand new Legendary Heroes coming to the game this weekend in the Legendary Piercer Lord Eovar and the Legendary Esotericist Mage Seraphina. So first things first, guys, they have released some really cool trailers, and I wanted to watch them with you real quick. We'll start with Eovar. I think his is really cool. Let's watch. What do you seek in the forest? Watcher of Realms. Man, right off of the bat, guys, that animation of Eovar versus the guild boss with just the flying swords is just so hype, man. It's just so hype. I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on Eovar. Hopefully, I'll get lucky. We'll have to see. Then, of course, we also have Seraphina. Let's watch her trailer. And so I've graced you with my presence. Watcher of Realms. I like the emphasis on the S's. <laughs> I know there's she's a snake, and like that's kind of to be expected in those situations, but it really just makes the voice make more sense, which is kind of weird, but it just it just fits her so well. But guys, let's dive in. First, let's go ahead and dive into Seraphina's kit, uh, because I think it's going to be a little bit quicker, right? Because Eovar is a lord, so there's a lot more to talk about. So we have Seraphina here. She's an Esotericist mage. She does deal magic damage, and she has this new tag called Energy Cache, or Cache, however you want to say it. When no enemies can be targeted, the hero changes a mystic flame, or sorry, charges mix, mystic flame during each attack interval to unleash concurrently later, stacking up to three times. If an enemy receives damage from Seraphina four times within one second, they will receive an extra 200% damage one time. So Mystic Flame is, upon hitting the enemy, deal damage equal to basic attack one time. So basically what that means is if there's no one near her, she's going to stockpile basic attacks right? Um, which is really cool, actually, because a lot of the times your heroes may just sit there, like, holding their arrow back, you know? And Seraphina's gonna hold her, her her arms back to cast her magic, and then when she comes, she's gonna go, ha-ha! You thought you were gonna get one! You're gonna get four, and that's really interesting. And then also, if you end up hitting her four times, hitting the target four times, you're gonna get an additional bonus to that damage as well. Her basic attack is just 100% magic damage, nothing crazy there. First passive is Eternal Hatred. Each basic attack or trigger in a talent effect has a 20% chance of being enhanced. Each enhanced basic attack and Mystic Flame deal 60% increased damage and inflict Curse on the target, which is the um, un unability to perform their basic attack. So that's pretty interesting. Um, it also goes up to 100% increased damage, which is pretty good. It also makes me wonder, and I'm actually curious about this since we're talking about this, does Mystic Flame count as a basic attack? Because if it does, Infernal Roar could be really, really good for Seraphina. If it doesn't, then much less so, right? But it's definitely an interesting thought process. Arcane Secrets, with three stacks of Mystic Flame, increase attack by 20%. So that's pretty interesting as well. Uh, basically, it just means she's going to have one really big hit of basic attacks when a target comes in. So basically, basically, <laughs> see what I did there? Basically, what that means is she's going to be a pretty strong single target sort of nuke damage dealer uh, with her basic attacks, provided there's time within enemies. So not good in places such as Gear Raid 1, where there's a sort of constant influx of enemies, but could be good in other places like maybe Void Rift, where you have those guys that walk really slowly, right? And then you can just go and hit with a bunch of magic attack, maybe kill them right away. Could be interesting for sure. Then we have the ultimate. During the ultimate, removes currently charged Mystic Flame and reduces the charge interval of Mystic Flame by 40%. Mystic Flame will be unleashed together only when there are three stacks of it. That's actually really cool. Um, so basically, even if there's targets around you, 
you won't release the Mystic Flame until you've until you've stacked three stacks, which is pretty cool. That's actually really interesting. I like that. Um, it also reduces the attack interval by 10% and then another 10%, so 20%. Uh, so we're going up to, I'm assuming this is going to go to 60%, right? Because you're reducing the charge interval, so it's going to end up being a 40% of its normal charge. And then also lasts 10 seconds, and it only costs 800 energy instead of 900. So really interesting kit. Um, I'm excited to see what she can do in actual combat, because I think there's a lot of potential here for sure. Um, but let's look at the Awakens real quick. A1, during the ultimate, the trigger chance of Eternal Hatred increases by 15%. Um, that's not bad, right? Because it gives you that additional uh, increase to damage and the curse. So it makes it 35%. Definitely not bad at all. A2 is flat attack. A3 upon first deployment increased damage by 40% for three second three for 30 seconds. Okay, I mean that's cool. Uh, but I don't think it's worth going A3 for, in my personal opinion. Then we have A5 deal 20% increased damage to targets inflicted with curse and restores 2% rage. Now, this on the other hand does sound interesting, especially when you pair her with some of the other champions in the Esotericist faction. If we go and look, you have champions, one of the ones that comes to mind right away is is it Gankar? yeah when blocking enemies applies a curse to them um and so it's just an automatic everyone that he blocks which is going to be you know two people potentially up to three um uh, gets curse applied right there is also i think our death does it too doesn't he does he apply curse uh, oh no it's just his ultimate is called curse that's what it is okay yeah my bad so he doesn't actually apply curse but either way though i mean i think that's a very interesting potential in a5 however i don't think it's worth it to go all the way to a5 because a2 a3 and a4 are eh, right they're not anything super crazy in my personal opinion a1 i think is good pulling for a second copy of her i think is definitely not bad uh, but i don't think it's game changing now let's dive into the real guy here in the new piercer lord eovar much more difficult to get than seraphina however we do have the 15x coming up on her banner his banner this weekend so if you do or if you are really close to pity and you've got some ancients saved up it's a very good idea to pull on this weekend's banner for him because he's going to be a big game changer for a lot of people i think he is a piercing marksman makes perfect sense for a piercer lord um i was really surprised to see a racha being a ground unit for a piercer class uh so this makes a lot more sense in my personal opinion i also love his uh you know sort of design right i love that he's got the single eye he, he's an, has a marksman with that really big eye to help him see where he needs to hit things is really interesting we have this talent here, Conjures one flying sword every four seconds. There could be at most 12 flying swords at the same time. Every extra allied marksman on the field increases the conjuring speed of flying swords. When there are four extra marksmen in battle, the conjuring speed maxes out, reaching one flying sword every two seconds. So you want to have a ton of marksmen paired with Eovar, uh, which is, you know, not super surprising. If we go and we look, right, you'll see... That's not going to be super difficult to do in a lot of content, right? Uh, if you're looking at something like Guild Boss, for example, you're going to have one in Silas. You're going to have two in, um, uh, why am I blinking on his name? Hex, right? Right off the bat, there's two. Um, I, I'm assuming he doesn't count, right? Yeah, it says four extra marksmen, so he probably doesn't count. But either way, you're going to have a decent chunk of them already kind of built in. Um, but then we can go into other locations, for example, the Furious Torrent fight, where you use a lot of marksmen. For example, you have people such as Maul and Nyx that are in there. So it makes sense you're going to be able to easily get four extra marksmen uh, in certain situations. Then let's go ahead and talk about his actual skill. So first things first is we have his physical attack. He deals 50% damage to one enemy two times, prioritizing airborne units. This is really interesting because... Um, you know, when we're looking at places that current piercer units are used, one of those big places is actually in Lord of the Sticks Immortal Codex. So having a basic that hits two times is a really good start to a kit. 
Let me go into the passive here. Upon casting the ultimate, reduce the attack interval by 20%, and each attack deals 55% damage three times. This effect lasts for 10 seconds. If an ultimate consumes 12 flying swords, the duration of this effect is extended by five seconds. That's really, really good. So again, we're talking about Lord of the Sticks just a second ago. This is going to be even better. You're going to be getting an additional hit, making it three times instead of two, and you're reducing the attack interval by 20%, which is kind of insane. Insane. Let's go into the second passive here, a lethal bladestorm. After an allied marksman cast their ultimate, gain one flying sword, and the following three basic attacks of this hero ignores an extra 15% defense. This is really, really good. Um, especially, again, when you're looking at places like Immortal Codex, where you have a lot of ultimates going off and a lot of marksmen, uh, you know, potentially in there, you're going to get a lot of flying swords, a lot of extra defense pen. Really, really nice. Then let's look at the ultimate, because he does seem to sort of, uh, you know, rally around the ultimate here. Consumes all flying flying swords and activates the flying activates the flying sword formation to continuously deal 25% damage to the enemy with the lowest hp in range this freak the frequency of strikes increases with the number of flying swords reaching up to 60 strikes with 12 flying swords so let's do this math real quick right because this is i think actually a pretty big pretty big deal we're getting 60 strikes but it says here that we reduce the attack interval by 20% and each attack deals damage three times. Now, if I'm reading this correctly, I believe that that means that we're going to be getting 180 attacks from these 60 strikes in three seconds, <laughs> um, which is really good um you know for for places again such as lord of sticks uh because you want to break those shields really really quickly so that's definitely interesting um again i'm not sure 100 percent how it works but it definitely sounds like it's going to be insane i just also think the animation looks really cool just seeing those swords kind of you know appear above him and then just shoot out constantly is really interesting and also actually looking at the animation now it looks like the infinite blades is actually separate from the basic attacks so it's different. I actually lied. It's it's different. So it looks like you're actually just going to be getting 60 strikes and then your basic attacks are going to be just faster. So you're actually getting more um, basic attacks, but not as many of these 60 strikes. So you're just getting 60 strikes if you have 12 flying swords. So definitely interesting. Uh, you will want to watch the activation of the ultimate, right? Because we have this other passive where you get an additional flying sword whenever an allied marksman uses their ultimate. So if you have like 11 or 10 swords and you have two other marksmen, you want to activate them first, giving yourself 12 to get maximum, uh, you know, effect out of the ultimate from Eovar. Then let's go ahead and quickly dive. Or actually, I guess let's dive into the Lord skill. I talked about it in another video, but let's talk about it here. This Lord skill, I think, is insane. It is a million times better than Arachas, in my personal opinion, because Arachas is specific to the, the, the size of the you know, range difference between the champions. You can get up to 50%, but there's only one champion in the game that can actually get the full 50%, and that's Idril during her ultimate. Um, and so when you have an Idril during her ultimate, and that's the only marksman you have, sure, Arasha is going to be better. But for almost every other situation, I think Eovar is going to be better for the Lord skill. You're going to be getting the same 15% basic attributes, the same increased range for faction allies, but you're also going to be getting 15% damage increase every 20 seconds up to three times, which means after the first minute of the fight, you're going to have a 45% damage increase, which is a lot better than the potentially, you know, 10, 20, 25% you're going to be getting from the Arasha Lord skill. So what does this mean? Well, this means it's going to be a lot easier for you to hit 50k blood on nightmare four if you get eovar over aracha because you're just going to have more damage faster you know over the full first minute of the fight and it's going to stay that way for the rest of the fight which is really really good it also means you're going to benefit a lot more on for example right now you can only get max distance on one marksman because the other one you have to place in a different location to be buffed by the laurel and the dolores and all those other things right so this way it doesn't matter the positioning of your champions you're just going to get that flat damage percent boost which is really really powerful 
Let's go ahead and quickly talk about the Awakens. Now, I know you're thinking, Panda, like, stop talking about A5 on Mar on, on Lords because no one's going to get an A5 Lord. Well, eventually you will, and it's good to know. Uh, we also have things known as, you know, Legendary Hero Soul Stones, which with the new update, it looks like there's potential for that to be a little bit easier to obtain with the removal of those lower level, you know, um, yeah, rewards, right? So, let's think about A1. When the ultimate ends, there's a 40% chance of generating four flying swords immediately. I think this is great. The ultimate is a very, very low cost ultimate, right? It's very low. You're going to cast it a lot. So, you're not going to have a lot of time to build flying swords up. So, having this 40% 40 chance of just generating four flying swords, which is one third of the requirement is really really good right it's really good so i think a1 on eovar is a fantastic choice uh to pick up a2 is the increased faction team members damage to airborne units i don't think this is crazy um I think it's really good in certain situations, but in a lot of places, it's not going to be super crazy because if not half, more than half of the units are going to be ground-based. So A3, uh, duration of victorious pursuit plus five seconds. So that is the um, ultimate, right? You get an additional five seconds on top of that. So you could end up having this um, attack interval bonus up to 20 seconds if you have the 12 flying swords consumed during the ultimate, um, which is actually pretty good. I think A3 on him is going to be really, really well worth it, um, especially if he does as much damage as I believe he's going to be doing. A4 is 8% crit rate. We never complained about making a champion easier to build. And then A5 is a nice because you're going to be getting a guaranteed flying swords on your first set, which from the way that I'm reading into this and the way that I'm kind of thinking this is going to play out is as you build up your swords you want to use your first ultimate with 12 swords and the reason is is because you're going to use your first ultimate for 12 swords you're going to have a chance to proc that 40 percent to get four additional swords but you're also going to proc victorious pursuit which is going to increase your chance of procking more swords um, and so by using your first ultimate with 12 swords you have a better chance of each consecutive ultimate to have also 12 swords available so, being able to guarantee your first ultimate has 12 flying swords means you're going to get more ultimates cast faster because you're not going to have to sit there and wait for all 12 swords. But also, it's just going to make it much easier to have your consecutive ultimates have 12 swords. So, getting A1, I think, is great. I think it's going to be very good. Definitely wait for the whales to test it before you use your important resources. But I think A1 on EOVAR is going to be a no-brainer. A2 I think is not worth it, but if you get to A2, I think A3 is very well worth it. Then for A4, again, always makes it easy. It's better to build a champ with less crit rate so you can get other things like attack percent and crit damage and attack speed and rage regen, etc. And then A5 I think is going to be very, very good. But again, this is a lord, an ancient exclusive lord to be specific, so it's going to be very difficult to get your hands on. But guys, those are the two brand new legendary champions coming to the game. Uh, and I'm really excited to see, you know, how this weekend goes. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys are summoning this weekend. Let me know who you're going for. Are you going for both of them? I know personally myself, I only have 34 blue summons and about 12 and a half K diamonds. And I think I'm going to save for the potential of the 250 guaranteed for Dahlia, personally. But I do have almost 30 Ancient Summons. I've got 26 at the moment. Um, and I think that I'm going to try to go for Eovar. Um, even though, I mean, unfortunately, I can't see where I am with my pity there. I did just pull a Rasha not too long ago. So there's a good chance I won't hit it. But if I do happen to hit it, I think it's going to be game-changing for my account. Let me know in the comment section down below what your plan is. Don't forget to hit that like button if you liked the video. And don't forget to subscribe as we are pushing for 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I really hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.